Your Creative Push, Episode 62. In order to to really excel in it, you really have to let go. Welcome to Your Creative Push, the podcast that pushes you to pursue your creative passions. I'm your host, Youngman Brown, and my guest today is Matthias Adolfsson. Matthias is an incredible artist and illustrator from Sweden whose drawings feature infectious characters, fantastical worlds, sci-fi elements, and gentle, pleasing colors. His work has been seen in the New York Times, The Onion, and Spotify, just to name a few. He has released four personal books, and his book, The Second in Line, from the sketchbooks of Matthias Adolfsson, won Most Beautiful Swedish Book in 2014, as well as several other awards. Matthias, thank you so much for coming on the show today. I was wondering if maybe you could start out by diving a little bit deeper into your creative journey and tell us where you started and how you ended up at the point you are at now. I never knew exactly what I wanted to be when I grew up, so I I tried so much different uh, stuff. I started up uh, reading uh, to be an engineer, but uh, after one year, I, I really felt it wasn't for me, so I quit college and I worked a couple of years making uh, small kind of uh, employee things. And uh, then I chose to um, start uh, studying architecture. But um, I found out that I wasn't that interested in architecture, but um, I started using sketchbooks. And uh, for most of the part, (laughs) while studying to be an architect, I just filled up the sketchbooks with doodles and um, then I let my uh, my classmates look into the sketchbooks and I really liked that feeling but I never thought anything much about uh, it was just doodles and I didn't think I could be an illustrator so I uh, I quit architect school uh, and I uh, took a master's uh, of fine arts in graphic design but during um, my stay at this college I fell in love with the 3D media mm-hmm. I really liked the, the way you could build worlds. And uh, I ended up making my final uh, exam work uh, in college was uh, like computer games. Uh, it was a story about uh, some Polish uh, cosmonauts going to Mars. Mm. And uh, when I finished, uh, I was hired by a game company. And uh, then I ended up working with computer games more or less for 10 years before starting uh, as a freelance illustrator of that. So that's the trip to uh, my current occupation. Very cool. And can you tell us a little bit more about what you're doing right now with uh, your books and all your different freelance illustrations? Yeah, but I, I'm still working with computer games. I um, I started drawing on my free time and uh, we were going to, uh, me and my family, we're going to, uh, we lived in Gothenburg, uh, which is um, the uncool part of Sweden, but friendly. So we moved to Stockholm, mm-hmm. which is really cool, but uh, not as friendly. And uh, the plan was for me to start working uh, with this uh, Sweden's largest uh, video game company. I've, I've been working there before, um, but then I commuted from Gothenburg. But now we plan to move to to the east uh, side of Stockholm uh, of Sweden. I'd just been four days at this studio, and my body just said, "No, <laughs> I can't. Put, <laughs> I can't continue making video games." It's uh, and I would really. I started. Uh, blogging uh, putting up my my drawings and i a lot of uh, feedback and started getting commission work so i quit on the day from this uh, game company and just started drawing full time the plan was for me to maybe work two or three years at the studio and then going on to freelancing but uh, it was a really swift decision so um, it's, it's always Pretty difficult at the beginning because uh, having a steady job, you really get you get a good salary. But when you start freelancing directly, it's uh, it's quite a shock. But luckily, we had uh, sold the house uh, in Gothenburg for quite a lot of money, and the house on the east side was uh, not as expensive, so we had a little buffer. Mm. So uh, I managed to survive the first uh, the first couple of lean years. Would you say that when you were working at the video game company, it, it didn't feel it felt more like work instead of like art and an expression of yourself? It was more of a job. It's it's been there been such a, um, a development with the computer game industry because the first uh, couple of games I made, we were maybe five or six uh, people in a team, and it was really 
uh, a very close little team that made the games. Uh, the last couple of games I did, the team was two, three hundred people, and uh, mm. you, it's more and more specific. You make small, small parts, and in the end, I more or less uh, just uh, programmed. Uh, mm. I didn't find the 3D modeling and 3D animation any f- fun anymore, but I really loved programming. But I, I, the older you get, the, <laughs> the more sluggish your brain gets. When it comes <laughs> to programming, it's really difficult. Sure. It's a, I think programming is a, that's a young man's uh, game. And I think I, I'm more than an artist than a programmer if I, I really wanted to do something completely different. But it, I think it's, it's, it, it was crea- a creative work anyway, but... Uh, it's a, um, it's like a different kind of creativity, and it's it's nice to work in a well-functioning team can be very, very fulfilling as well. And that's maybe one of the things uh, that I can uh, miss when working on my own. That nothing happens if you don't do the work, but if you're a team, there's stuff ha- happening all over. So uh, the result can be is more than you, but otherwise, what you create as a little person in the team might not make that much difference so yeah in the end i opted out yeah well i went to school for uh computer science so i had to take some programming courses and i have a lot of respect for people who can program it takes a a very analytical um side of your brain and you're right it is it can be creative but it can also be very stressful because it's like a a, a puzzle almost that you have to figure out yeah so i can relate and I can also relate to, you know, missing the, the team aspect of it. Yeah. And when you're on your own, you're right. You are your own boss and you're, you're much more accountable. Yeah. <laughs> or you have to be much more yeah. accountable, I should say. But on the other side, when I get commission work, I get that as well. I get to work in teams, even though the most of the interaction is maybe on Skype or by mail. So you're not directly linked to the team. You're more like some kind of uh, divine creature coming into the team. <laughs> <laughs> sure sure that makes yeah. sense um aside from you know being your own boss and you know having to make yourself do the work what are some other things that hold you back from being creative like on a daily basis i think i've reached uh, my creativity has matured to that point that i really don't have to worry that much about the process the creativity just kind of uh, it's a natural part of me so I, I really don't have to give it that much thought the thing is um, that on occasion the commission part of my uh, existence take over and I, I really I really feel that I have to create something personal each day it's, uh, it's, it's been such a big part of my life for the uh, last couple of years so it's more getting time to make my personal drawings each day so I don't really have that much. Um, I can more or less create anywhere I am. I, if I go by the uh, commuter train into town, I can have a sketchbook and sit on the train. And uh, so the hurdle towards me creating things is really not uh, a big problem for me. So then you just spend time like when you're commuting and whenever you can find uh, what, what you would call like found time. Yeah, like, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. So it's uh, for me, it's... Um, if I go, uh, if I'm going to travel somewhere and uh, I'm waiting for the plane and they say uh, there's been a delay, and <laughs> the first thought for me is great. I have another couple <laughs> of have, hours yeah. to, to because uh, uh, when I'm at home, there's always something, there's always some commission work I have to do. But just mm-hmm. being on the road where, where I can't do anything else, it's such a nice feeling just to sit down. It's uh, almost like the sketchbook is some kind of. Uh, sanctuary sanctuary for me it's um mm. yeah it's some kind of meditation and i can just uh, let the world it dims out so it's a, it's a really nice feeling that's a that's a beautiful sentiment i i think that you know a lot of people listening can can relate to that and hopefully can look at their time that they're doing their art as you know a kind of a, a sacred time like yeah. in their sanctuary you know i think that's a really good feeling to have because then it's so much easier to to be able to do the work if you're not quite feeling motivated yeah exactly could you maybe tell us the story of your worst moment um or your hardest time creatively it probably was um, when i decided to uh, to quit my uh, my job at the game studio it, as i really hadn't planned it uh, and i 
I really didn't think that I could survive as a freelancer. It's always, you never know <laughs> what lie, lies behind the, the other door. And my wife, she's also an artist. So we're both freelance, uh, freelancing and we have uh, two kids. Uh, so uh, making that decision was probably on some occasion my darkest uh, moments. And now when I look back, it's uh, it was probably the only thing I could do. So... But at the moment, it was really, really uh, difficult. And I think a lot of artists uh, that want to make uh, the push feel the same thing. Is it, uh, do I dare, uh, so to speak? Yeah, it's it's really scary, um, especially to leave behind to your source of income. Yeah. And it really, really feels like jumping off a cliff almost and, and hoping that you you have kind of the wings to fly, you know? Yeah. And uh, ordinary in Sweden, we have a really good... Uh, your real protection from uh, you, you get uh, if you're un- unemployed you can get money from the state and such but uh, the way I did it uh, I more or less opted out of that system because for artists there is really not that uh, because I had to start my own company and then in that case you can't get the unemployment money so it, it was really scary I think maybe in other countries it's that's more the situation but uh, so i really opted up from it yeah i mean in a, in america you get a, a certain amount of t- time depending on uh, where you work yeah but it's still you know not that much time to be able to feel comfortable yeah I think. yeah yeah what um what was it that finally gave you that like can you take me back to the day that you decided all right, this isn't for me. You said it was very swift, a very quick um, transition. What what was like the deciding factor? I think it 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 came down to one of my uh, colleagues said just one uh, line. Do you know the concept of elite? Elite. Yeah, it's uh, in game. I think it's more more from the demo scene, uh, making demos of all uh, computers. Uh, to be elite was to be extremely good at something. Uh, sure, like the 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 cream of the crop. Yeah, yeah, the best. yeah, yeah. And, yeah. I, and I remember he, he. I think he just said something like, "I'm so darn elite," and I, something clicked when I heard. <laughs> I just want. I don't want to be in this uh, place anymore. Yeah. I, yeah. I, when I when I uh, think back, as I started with my drawings on the side. I think the last part that understood that I w- didn't want to do this uh, anymore was my body. And it came to that, uh, I think my brain and everything had already made the decision for me. So it was just uh, such an extremely, uh, like my body just said to me, no, <laughs> get out of here. Yeah. I- I've mentioned on the show a couple times now that I started this podcast, yeah. it's been about three months now. But since I started it, I have that feeling like in my body in my soul yeah. when i walk into work where i'm like okay now that i found this this other thing i know that that's like where my passion is yeah. and being here is like dying <laughs> yeah 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 that's so, that, that's exactly exactly the feeling i felt uh yeah and it is physical you can feel it physically yeah, almost yeah 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 <laughs> so yeah. i i understand what you're yeah. saying so was he saying that he was elite like he was better than like that his art was better than ev- everyone else's yeah, or that he yeah, was better than uh, i think it's uh, it was that mentality and, and yeah. just said it so it's uh, it was not uh, meant to be mean towards uh, anybody else but uh, sure I think it's just, uh, and I didn't say anything uh, towards it, but it's just when I go back and think about it, it's just that line, and it's so, uh, it's so random. But I, I, it could mm-hmm. have been anything. So sure. Well, first of all, I think that um, there's this quote that I really love. That's um, what you are and what how you are is um, made up by the the five people that you spend the most time with. So if you're surrounded by you know negative people or people who think that they're elite, um, you start to become that. And I think that your physical reaction to that kind of a statement was saying, whoa, I don't want to be like this. I don't want to surround myself, you know, with this. And second of all, I think that that's a really negative, it's a really bad attitude to have um, to consider yourself better than everyone else or to consider yourself elite. I think there's something really to be said about being humble and never quite feeling like you're at the at the elite stage, you're at the top of the mountain. Yeah. Like, I think it, 
especially creatively, that you can always learn and you can always, you know, grow. Exactly. Yeah, that's right. On the flip side, could you take us to your best moment, uh, your best creative moment? I've been so lucky. So it's uh, there's so much uh, moments that it's have been so That's good. Yeah, yeah. So it's uh, I think Chris Rock said uh, he spoke about how how it felt to be rich, and he said it's like being a really hot chick. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> sometimes when I I travel abroad, going to festivals or uh, having workshop, it's it's really like being a uh, extremely um hot chick yeah <laughs> <laughs> and it, it's so it. and i i'm pretty uh, glad that it happened to me while i wasn't 20 years old so uh, i'm so much more calm and i can i can stand on the side and watch it but uh so, so maybe just uh those moments when meeting fans are probably the the best moments i have such a strange feeling i sit to uh, the darkest part of Sweden and uh, <laughs> makes silly mm. doodles and then I, I travel abroad and a lot of people know know who I am so it's a it's a, it's a wonderful feeling and I get a lot of feedback online but uh, hearing it uh, directly from people it's it's really wonderful absolutely well, it's one thing to get like a Facebook like or to get a you know a listen on your podcast or to get a number but then it's a completely other thing to get a comment or an email from a from a listener or somebody that likes your work and then it's another thing completely to talk to be interacting with somebody in real life and they say oh i like your podcast i specifically yeah. like this episode or i read this piece that you wrote and it really resonated with me um i think that's like you said it, it is it makes you feel like a hot chick <laughs> <laughs> i love yeah. that so you have a lot going on and like you said, you find your sanctuary during your found time, but uh, what's your formula for balancing your time with all the different commissions and everything else creative and everything else in your personal life? I think when getting uh, children, it teaches you to really uh, make the best of time. Now my kids are more or less grown up, but uh, when they were small, there was so little uh, time that you had for yourself. And I think it really taught me uh, to make the best of each minute. Uh, I, when I look back at the time when I was in college, I, I can't believe how much time I just wasted. It's, it's so, mm. so I, I think uh, saying that there's always, I tend to uh, put my f uh, personal drawings before <laughs> commission work. So I, when it comes to the deadlines, uh, uh, work really seems to pile up. I'm making this really big project at the moment with very large drawings. The deadline date is. <laughs> I think I really can plan my time, but it's uh, in my system somehow. So it's I tend never to be late. At the, but I, but I think get, getting kids and uh, that's a great way of uh, learning to to cope with time. So, so it's also. I think there's been a big help to working with video games because each minute is uh, accounted for. So perhaps that also taught me to uh, really try to uh, make the best of the time. But, but I'm great at wasting time now nowadays too. But uh, <laughs> luckily my smartphone broke, so <laughs> that's a great... Oh, uh, that's helpful. <laughs> yeah, but that's great because uh, now I can draw a little bit more <laughs> instead of watching watching the phone. Yeah, I think that the phone is a big thing. I always, uh, a lot of times I, at the end of the episodes, I like to say, um, all right, turn off your phone. Like now that the episode's over, turn it off and get to work. Um, because I think it is kind of like a an appendage. It's like a extra, it's like attached to us. Yeah. And it's, if you're not checking it uh, every five minutes, it, it feels like you're missing out. Yeah, and exactly. I think that's a yeah. kind of yeah. an unhealthy thing. Yeah, <laughs> it's like a big bowl of uh, candy, and you can't uh, stay out of the candy. <laughs> so it's, uh... Yeah, it's it's really hard to stop eating. Yeah, <laughs> Matthias, what would you say that art and creativity brings to your life? Uh, it's brought so much uh, positive thing for me, and I, for me, it's brought uh, it. Uh, given me uh, a sense of calmness. Uh, I used to be irritated about a lot of things in, <laughs> in my vicinity. Why is he talking so loud and uh, no, etc. Everything. Mm. But nowadays, I just um, 
being able to create stuff. I can step away from the uh, uh, reality and just step into my uh, little fantasy world. Uh, and it's, uh, I think I, I mentioned in uh, meditation before, but I think this is my kind of meditation and just being able to uh, create and uh, you get in, in that, uh, that flow, the state of flow when everything just feels, uh, each line just feels, it fills you with a, just a nice feeling. Uh, mm. So, so it's uh, really enriched my life when I think about um, even when I worked it was a creative work but it's uh, this is so much more uh, being able to really just uh, make the things that is in your brain yeah like you said it's a sanctuary yeah, and yeah. that's I think a big part of it is when you're in that sanctuary you feel free and you feel like you are in that flow state and it's it's a nice feeling and it's so when you're there it's so easy to not think about the the problems you have in real life <laughs> yeah um do you have a, a favorite book or youtube clip or anything else that you draw inspiration from and that maybe we could too yeah um uh, there's an online course uh on Yale university called listening to music uh i think i listened to it um three times it's uh i think it's about 20 uh, 20 lectures and it's a really wonderful insight into classical music um and it's um there's also a lot of uh, students coming and playing for example baroque music and they explain uh, different parts of the symphony and stuff like that it's really really very 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 interesting and then also uh, I would like to recommend a British documentary about the early house and techno scene in the Chicago and uh, uh, Detroit called Pump Up the Volume. Because I think uh, electronic music and uh, the stuff that I do, they have some similarities. It's, uh, it's the same uh, do-it-yourself attitude. Uh, mm. and it's also a, a very... You can more or less uh, come from all over the world. Uh, it doesn't matter. It's one of the true... Uh, Electronic music is more, um, it's very international, uh, more than, uh, for example, rock music or uh, hip hop. Uh, so I, I can really recommend that one as well. So do you love electronic music yeah, the most? Yeah, yeah. no, I, I used to work uh, like uh, punk music and uh, indie music and electronic uh, industrial music and early rock and roll but uh, when i work uh, electronic music works best for me uh, somehow <laughs> i don't know why me as well yeah. Uh, I, yeah i love electronic music yeah. it's my favorite and it used to be i used to like rock the most yeah. but i don't know what changed for me i think maybe when i went to coachella which is a uh, music festival in california oh, okay. yeah. yeah um i think perhaps that changed my attitude and maybe some other things <laughs> but uh it might be when you get old you know <laughs> yeah that's yeah. true i think things change and it's important yeah. to kind of go go with the changes and not kind of get stuck with you know what you loved when you were a kid because i look back at what i used to love music wise and i'm yeah. like yeah I, don't, I can't even listen to this anymore <laughs> yeah it's, it's strange because i think a lot of people uh, tend to um, stay in their music tastes so uh, the music they listen to while um early adulthood stays with them so it, it's different for different people i think for sure and yeah. uh, you know like you said like you mentioned uh, so that listening to music course is that is that audio or is that yeah it's video? audio you can see it um, a video version as well but uh, okay i prefer to to uh, to listen to audio versions as i can uh, continue drawing so sure there's a, there's a lot of uh, good uh, uh, courses at Yale University. Awesome. Yeah, we'll we'll link those. And yeah, uh, that's the other good thing. You know, classical I like as well for doing work um, and yeah. electronic because, especially with with no vocals, because it's you know it's you don't get distracted. Yeah, by it. Yeah. it just kind of becomes a part of your flow. If you're going to write something, it's really difficult. I think it's to 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 listen to uh, spoken music. Sure. Yeah. Awesome. We will link those in the show notes page at yourcreativepush.com slash Matthias, M-A-T-T-I-A-S. Yes. Uh, Matthias, it is time for our final push. Yes. And th this is where I ask you to reach through the microphone and grab the shoulder of one of the listeners you have inspired today and give your best advice and push them into action. This is a really hard, hard one, I think. Uh, 
especially uh, if you have listened to the song Cosmic Shame by Tenacious D. Uh, yes. It, <laughs> it can be hard to... Um, with the work climate today, you can, you can never be sure uh, about the security of any work. So starting out as early as possible, being your own boss, I think it's, uh, it's the best thing. If you have a creative ability, you, you really should try to uh, free yourself in order to, to really excel in it. You really have to let go. If you have the possibility, I think. So, and, uh, having stepped out on the other side, when everything works, it's it's the best thing thing ever. You you can't I can't understand all the meetings we had on, on video <laughs> games. It's yeah. oh so boring. <laughs> <laughs> take take the take the push. Absolutely. Yeah. And and not only being your own boss, you know, after you perhaps take the leap. But before that, like if you do have a full time job and if you do have creative passions, but don't quite get to them because you don't have enough time, yeah. be your own boss at that point, too. And just yeah, be exactly. treat treat yourself like an employee that's not doing their work, because that's really what it is. Yeah. It's you're wasting your wasting your time, as you said. Yeah, it's true. Oh man, uh, Matthias, thank you so much for for coming on the show today and for giving us that push. Yeah, loved it. Yeah, thank you. And you can find Matthias on his website, MatthiasAdolfson.com. That's M A T T I A S A D O L F S S O N. Or you can more easily perhaps find those links, everything we talked about on the show notes page at yourcreativepush.com slash Matthias, M A T T I A S. Matthias, thank you again, brother. We really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks. Loved it. Uh, Just a huge thank you to Matthias for coming on the show. You know, when I started this show, the idea was to not really talk too much about quitting your job. The main focus was for, you know, people with full-time jobs, full-time lives, and trying to balance your free time to start or to continue doing your creative work. But as it's kind of progressing and as I'm kind of going through this uh, myself, I realize that sometimes that's not possible. Um, because as you really start to dive into your creative life, you realize that that is what you're supposed to be doing. Um, and it makes everything else, as I talked about in the episode, it makes everything about your job feel physically painful. Uh, Matthias went through that as well. Um, so that's something that I am currently trying to figure out at the moment and will continue to update you, I am sure about how that is going with my life, but definitely be warned that if you do start doing what you're passionate about and kind of what your perhaps life calling is, um, it might get a little murky when you have to go in and (laughs) go into a job that you start to maybe not like more and more and more as the days and hours kind of go on. It's a scary thing, but uh, we'll be here to help you kind of navigate that if you want to try to make the leap. Um, and it might not have to be a leap. It could be a, like a easy dipping your toes in and kind of slowly getting used to the temperature of the water um, as you start to transition. But I don't really have too much advice for you yet as to how to navigate that. But I can say, like Matthias said, to treat your art like it's a sanctuary. Make sure that while you're doing the art, while you're immersing yourself in your creative passions, that you are enjoying yourself and that you're able to relax while you're doing it. Because if you're feeling the same way as you are at work, (laughs) doing your other daily routines that you might not enjoy as much, there's really no point. So just make sure that you treat it like it's a sanctuary, like it's a a safe place where you can just be yourself and then hope that that form of meditation is is enough to make all facets of your life better and try to round it out that way. But good luck. (laughs) I wish you the best. And uh, if you have personal experience in kind of transitioning this way, I'd love to hear from you. Definitely head to the show notes page at yourcreativepush.com slash Matthias or yourcreativepush.com slash 62 i definitely love to hear from you if you are in a similar situation or if you have done it yourself uh, and you have some words of advice. Please, 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 we all need it. On tomorrow's show, we have David Talley. Go start today. Don't wait until tomorrow because you won't do it. Start today. Once this podcast is over, 
and go take your first photo or paint your first painting or write your first song and do that every single day for the next 30 days. And if you, if you do this, first of all, write me and tell me because I think that this is really important, but I fully believe that you will grow so much in those 30 days that you will, your life will change. Like honestly, your life will change. But the key is to start right now. Dave is an awesome photographer and a really cool guy. And we talk about this really cool concept of um, defining yourself by a, a single sentence, giving yourself kind of a thesis statement uh, that really helps to shape everything you do, both in life and your creative pursuits. So I highly recommend you checking that out tomorrow if you need the push again. But that is for you tomorrow. Hopefully today you are inspired to get your work done or maybe even quit your job. Who knows? Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for subscribing. I love you and I love the things that you do. Uh, We will be here for you tomorrow. Have a great day.